very good evening to one and all i welcome you all for the reader academy uh, this is my first live session on uh, asexual and sexual reproduction in plants the chapter 1 from botany um uh, my name is dr j devi and today i'm going to give you uh, a detailed view on how plants are uh, reproducing so the word reproductions is very familiar to you all that you had studied in your previous classes the word reproduction refers to the process by which organisms are producing their own kinds re means again and production means is a process of producing their own kinds so organisms are producing their own kinds for example a bacteria that give birth to a daughter cells or a cat that give birth to its own kittens or called as the reproduction so this reproduction is not a life process but it is a vital process for the extinction of species if a species has to survive on earth then it has to reproduce so there are a lot of uh, changes that happens during the time of reproduction the variation is one that is very important as it is leaving a path for the evolution so the offspring which is produced during the reproduction is not an identical clone of their parents there are some difference seen in the offspring which is needed for their survival on the earth so variation is called as the key for the evolution this reproduction uh, especially if you are taking it in case of a plants is is important not only for the survival and also it is needed for the continuation and the existence of all our organism and uh, it is little uh, harder for you to understand how the plants are getting into reproduction today i'm going to make it very easier for you to understand it to the core when talking on the types of reproduction there are two different types of reproduction one is asexual type of reproduction another one is the sexual type of reproduction and in your previous classes you may heard about these two terms and you studied what is the difference between these two type of reproduction the first one let we discuss first that is asexual type of reproduction in the asexual type of reproduction only one parent is going to involve in it that is single parents are going to involve in this type of reproduction so single parent so there is no uh, distinct uh, male and female present in this organism especially lower plants are involved in the asexual type of reproduction so single parents are going to involve in the asexual reproduction here you cannot identify male female and male gamete female gamete so these concepts should not present in case of a asexual reproduction and as there is no formation of gamete there will be no fusion of gamete and there is no a step called as fertilization is absent in case of a asexual reproduction so how this is going to multiply a very simple concept of cell division that is mitosis so the name of the cell division is called as a mitosis so to i just want to uh, give you a brief on this mitosis so let we have a look on mitosis the word mitosis i just show you that so mitosis this is one type of cell division here if you take a cell cell contain nucleus in them and they have diploid number of chromosomes for example if you take a human cell they contain 46 number of chromosomes 
So this 46 number of chromosome during the cell division they will going to form two cells and that two cells is going to contain nucleus in them. That nucleus will also contain 46 chromosome. So this is called as a mitotic cell division. So here you couldn't able to see any change in the number of chromosome. Okay. But if you take uh, meiotic cell division, if you take a meiotic cell division here, if you take a cell that contain a nucleus and that have 46 chromosome in them, but during the meiotic process, this 46 chromosome will be 23. So, there is a reduction. That's why it is called as a reduction division. You are calling it as a reduction division. Okay. So, this meiotic cell division always happens in case of a, a gamete cell. So, it may be a male gamete or it may be a female gamete that is in case of a sperm and in case of a ovum you could see only diploid number of haploid number of chromosome haploid number that is represented by the letter n that is 23 chromosome is present in case of a gamete so during the gametogenesis, that is formation of sperm or ovum, this 46 number of chromosome will divide into 23. And this happens only in the gametes. Whereas if you take in case of a mitotic cell division, here this happens in all the uh, normal stomatic cell. So if you take a stomatic cell, that is a normal cell which present in all parts of your body and that case mitotic cell division will take place. So meiotic cell division that happens in the gamete and that is going to reduce the uh, number of chromosome into F whereas the mitotic cell division here they are going to uh, just divide as such. So that is the two types of cell division. So asexual reproduction is one which is going to show you the same number of chromosome in their offspring. So asexual reproduction prefers mitotic cell division. And individuals which is going to form as a result of this asexual reproduction are genetically identical. They are just like a clones. They are just like a cones. So, clones means the exact Xerox copy of their parents. So, they are genetically identical as their parents. So, you couldn't see any variation happening in case of a asexual type of reproduction. Coming to a sexual type of reproduction, here two parents are involved in the reproduction, a male and a female. Male and female can be easily distinguished by their morphological features, by their anatomical feature. So male and female are very distinct in case of a sexual reproduction and the male is going to produce the male gamete, a female is going to produce the female gamete. So gametes are going to produce and they are going to fuse together and there is a formation of zygote by the process called as the fertilization. Fusion of male and female to produce the zygote is called as a fertilization that is going to happen in case of a sexual type of reproduction. And here the very primary process of cell division is the meiotic cell division that is a reduction type of cell division the 46 number of chromosome is going to break into 2F, that is 23 uh, chromosomes are going to be there in their offspring. And later, there are some conditions where they go for mitotic cell division, that is after the formation of 
zygote then they will be going for the mitotic cell division so male and female is going to form by meiotic cell division after the fusion and zygote formation they will be going for a normal type of cell division that is the zygote will be divided into two cell so that is a sort of mitotic cell division so meiotic is a major type of cell division and after the zygote formation they get into the mitotic type of cell division so individual shows variation here because two different type of chromosomes are going to involve that is of male and female so you can expect variations in the sexual type of reproduction then uh, as i said the mode of reproduction is of two type asexual and uh, sexual type of reproduction this is very commonly i just given you the difference between these two when you are talking on plants specifically here the asexual reproduction uh, you may wonder about the asexual reproduction in plants because uh, we studied about the different types of asexual reproduction in all other organism in a general we had a point like this so this asexual reproduction here you can see fission we studied in case of a bacteria that is one cell is divided into two that is called as binary fission and sometime the one cell is divided into many that is called as multiple fission that you heard in your previous classes and budding very aware about budding in case of hydra that is in a hydra so here the small bud will be formed and they will be detached to form as a new hydra so this is a type of asexual reproduction you study and fragmentation that is in case of a spirogyra one cell is being divided into many fragment and each fragment can give rise to a new organism so then gemma formation regeneration sporulation so those are many different types of asexual reproduction that we are aware about when you are talking on uh, asexual reproduction uh, which is narrow down to only plants in that case the asexual reproduction will happens in a plant which is happening only in the vegetative parts are going to participate in the formation of a new organism so there you cannot expect any seed formation there you cannot expect any spore formation and flower is not involved in this type of reproduction so in the asexual reproduction there is no involvement of the flower because flower is called as the sexual reproductive part of a plant so flower is called as the reproductive part of the plant so it is not going to involve in the asexual type of reproduction so what is going to involve in the asexual type of reproduction as i stated it is the vegetative part is going to involve in it either may be a leaf it may be a stem or it may be a root so a new plant is going to arise from the vegetative part it may be a leaf it may be a stem or it may be a root but if you take a sexual reproduction in a plants then a new plant will arise from the reproductive part that is flower so flower is going to participate in the sexual reproduction of a plant you are clear so okay fine so what is the product what is being formed here is the fruits and the seeds are going to be the product of the sexual reproduction so that's a, a difference between the asexual and sexual when you are concerning about the plants if it is happening in a plant so there is a variation so this lesson is going to talk on both the type of reproduction that is asexual as, as well as sexual type of reproduction so in this session 1 i'm going to discuss in detail about the asexual type of reproduction that is going to happen in case of a plant so chapter 1 
we are generally going to talk on reproduction in plant so two type of reproduction as i stated asexual and sexual we saw what is the difference between asexual and sexual and we just narrowed on the topic to the uh, plants sexual and sexual reproduction and now we are getting into the core of the lesson the first half of the lesson is going to talk on the asexual type of reproduction so in that asexual type of reproduction we are going to totally uh, talk on the vegetative propagation as i stated either root plant or the stem is going to involve in the uh, formation of new plant that is called as a vegetative reproduction so flower is called as the reproductive part whereas the buds uh, that is grows from a, a leaf stem or root is called as the vegetative part so here the vegetative part as i stated root stem and leaf so the buds are going to arise from these organ and the buds are going to grow and they will be growing as a new organism that is new plants are going to arise from the buds that are raised from the vegetative parts like the root stem and leaf sometimes these uh, buds that is which is being arised from the root stem and leaf are going to act as a organ of storage so they will be storing starch in them and they will be act as a organs of storage so that is the uh, a beautiful special modification of a reproduction flower is a reproductive part and androecium and gynoecium are the uh, unit of the reproduction but if you take a vegetative reproduction here the reproductive probigules or the diaspores are called as a units of a uh, reproductive structure it is being used for the process of propagation uh, i'll give you one uh, thing to understand this reproductive probigules if you take a potato in a potato you can able to see the eye region like this so here this is called as a reproductive probigule which is going to form like a bud and a new plant will arise from the eyes so these are called as the reproductive probigules or diaspores so which is being the main reason for the formation of new plant so i'll just give you an outline about what are all the topics we are going to cover in this session so this vegetative propagation we are classifying them into two one is called as the natural method another one is the artificial vegetative propagation natural vegetative propagation is being carried by the nature and humans are not involved in this so they are going to choose either root stem leaf or the bulb that is the storage organ for the formation of the next generation uh, it may be a root as i stated or it may be stem if it is in stem case you are having three different Uh, types of stem which is going to participate in the natural vegetative propagation underground subaerial and aerial underground i think you know it is under the soil and subaerial is the stem which is present above the soil so these are all the varieties rhizome tuba bulb corm sac so these are the five different varieties which is coming under the case of a underground stem but if you are taking a subaerial stem that is seen above the ground then you are having runa of spet and stone stolen so runa of spet stolen so these three are going to come under the subaerial type of uh, stem and uh, if you are talking about the artificial vegetative propagation here humans are going to do this vegetative propagation method and we are going to do all the process to just extend it from the agriculture just to get a good yield good amount of yield and just to propagate them we are going to do it artificially and at this artificial vegetative propagation method we have cutting layering grafting approach grafting 
and micropropagation, which is an advanced technique that is modern vegetative propagation. Let me see one by one in detail to get you a great idea on how the plants are getting into vegetative propagation method. So, first we are going to see on asexual type of reproduction. In that we are going to see on vegetative propagation. Under the vegetative propagation, we are going to see the first division that is the natural method of vegetative propagation. So, natural vegetative method of propagation as I said, stated, it is being done by the vegetative pro, uh, parts that is root, stem and leaf. First, we are going to see on the root. So, when talking on the root, uh, as I stated, root is going to be present under the ground and they are going to develop as a new plant that is either the vegetative or the advantageous bud that is present on the root is going to grow as a new plant. So, some example I stated here. One is the uh, murai. Uh, this murai is actually, uh, uh, the Tamil you are calling it as Kariwepli. Okay. So, that murai is one good example of the vegetative, natural vegetative propagation uh, done by the roots. Okay, and the second one uh, is the uh, Millingtonia. Uh, in Tamil, it is called as uh, Tenpu or Kuralpu. So, this Millingtonia is uh, another example of uh, natural vegetative propagation that is done by the roots. And the third one is called as the Dalbergia. Uh, this is actually a tree. Uh, these three different uh, types of uh, um, plants are taking roots as their method of vegetative propagation. Are you all clear? Is it clear? Fine. Then let me go to uh, the second example of vegetative reproduction in roots. Some uh, tuberous adventitious root. And I think you are aware about these two types of root. One is called as the adventitious root, another one is the uh, main root. So, that is a root that is being formed from the radical is called as the, just a minute, I'll, I'll tell you what is that. Uh, yeah. Fine. So, I'll draw you the picture of uh, root. This is okay. This is the structure of a root. So this is called as a primary root, and this is this is called as the secondary root, and the one which is formed from here is called as the tertiary root. This is the structure of a tap root. Okay. And if you take in case of a, a fibrous root, here you cannot see any uh, primary root. So there will be a bunch of secondary root and uh, a tertiary roots will arise from here. Okay, so this is a fibrous root. So both the case of a tap root and a fibrous root are uh, during the process of uh, seed germination. Yes, yeah. So during the seed germinates, you have radical and you have plumule. So this is called as a plumule. And this is called as the radical. This lower portion. Okay. If the root arises from this radical, then it may be of two types. One is called as a tap root. Another one is called as the fibrous root. And this plumule is going to be the shoot system. Suppose if a root that does not arise from the tap root, it is called as the adventitious root. 
So, this adventitious roots will grow either from the branches or from the sides of the stem. So, this is going to give you additional support to the plant. So, such a type of root is called as the adventitious root. So, you are clear on the adventitious root? So, adventitious roots are going to give you additional support and that is not going to form from the uh, main radical. Okay. So, that uh, adventitious root apart from the developing bud, uh, they, are, they are not only involving in the vegetative propagation of producing buds and they are also involved in the uh, storage of food. Okay, so they are going to act like the vegetables. Here I stated some of the examples of uh, this uh, roots, storage root. One is called as the Eponia baptis, the very well known example, sweet potato, chakravali kadam. Okay, and the second one example is a dahlia. Uh, here I had given the, uh, what you are calling it as a tuber, that is kerangu. Okay, from this only you are getting dahlia plant. So, the one ornamental plant is the dahlia. Okay. So, this dahlia has the uh, tuber in them. From this, they are going to form. So, both these are an uh, example of a tuberous adventitious root which is also acting like a storage and also helpful for the vegetative propagation. So, this is the example. So, we have two examples. One is the uh, mure. Uh, which is called as Caryopoli and uh, Millingtonia, which is called as Kurelpu and Dalbergia. These are all the examples of um, vegetative propagation by root. And some adventitious roots are going to act as uh, storage. One is the Epomia baptis, which is, is called a sweet potato, uh, Chakravalli Karanga and Dahlia, uh, which is also propagate using the root. So, natural vegetative propagation method here roots are going to act as a uh, organ which is going to produce a new organism. So, one plant will root the number transfer. So, nature is doing it on its own. Fine. And the second uh, type of vegetative reproduction is the through the stem. Here stem is going to act as a vegetative part. So, uh, aerial uh, stem modification underground stem modification, subaerial stem modification or the three different types of stem modification which is going to helpful for the vegetative propagation and nature is doing it on its own. We are not involving in it. And uh, in that uh, first we let me talk about the underground stem. As I told you, this stem is going to just present below the soil. Sometimes you may uh, have a little confusion whether it is a stem or it is a root. So, uh, soil. So, below the soil, the stem will be present and sometimes they will be storing food. And this is called as the underground stem. And how could you identify this underground stem? You couldn't able to see any root structures here. If no root structure is present on that, then that is called as an underground stem. So, I stated four examples for the underground stem. One is the stem tuber. Best example is the potato. So, the eye which is present in the potato. So, hi. So this is a region called as an eye. So, this region is going to uh, form a new plants. So, that is stem tuber. We are calling it a stem tuber. And second one is the rhizome. Here, ginger is the example. Ginger is the example for rhizome. So, they are going to give rise to the new plants. And uh, the third one is the bulbil. Here, onion is the example of bulbil. And either you wheat la patriping and anakra. So, onion, if you are keeping it for a very long time, it will start growing the plants. So, onion is an example for the bulbil, which are which just are called as an underground stem, which will lead to the formation of a new plant. And the third one is called as a comb. Comb is actually 
the colocasia is an example of comb. Um, chepakarang, you are calling it as chepakarang, right? So that is an example of a comb. So all these four, tuba, rhizome, comb, bulbil, are the example of underground stem. Okay. And if you are taking subaerial stem, that is stem that is uh, seen above the ground and they have the root and some of the stem are just above the soil. So it is just above the soil and you, you can uh, feel just like a root because soil if it is like this, soil on the stem. So that is called a subaerial stem. So we have four different types of subaerial stem which is acting like a vegetative propagators. One is the runner. Uh, example is a strawberry. I showed you the picture here. So one mother plant will be here. And uh, this they are having a sub root everything. A mother plant will be here. Then the subaerial stem will grow above the just grow above the soil. At one point they have a node and that node will give rise to your baby plant, baby strawberry plant. Okay. And after a period of time, this uh, subaerial stem may break or the network will follow to the other baby plant from this. So like that, they will just look like a network. You can't able to separate uh, one plant at a time. So you can see the bunches of them uh, for a wide area, they just formed like a group. So that is called as a runner. Strawberry is an example for it. And uh, if you take stolen, uh, mint is a good example of stolen. Uh, here you can see them. So they are having a group, a bunch of plants are being raised up from one single root. A bunch will be there. And a stem will be connecting all these two. Okay. But that bunch will happen only in a group. So after that, one more group will be formed. So that is called as a stolen. And here in case of a, a sucker, chrysanthemum, samandip, that is an example of sucker. Here you could see that small plants are being arised from the mother stem. And that will be growing individually as a new plant. And offset, uh, this is actually, uh, you can use to see this uh, pistia plant in case of a water. This is actually an aquatic plant. So here you can see that a stem is just acting as a vegetative probability. From the mother plant, they are just arising up as a individual small baby plants are being formed. So through this stem, they are extending their uh, propagation and that's an example of a subaerial type of stem. So the third one, the very well known example we studied in all our classes is the vegetative reproduction by leaves. The well known example is the bryophyla. Here at the margin of the leaf, so at the margin of the leaf, here at the margin of the leaf, a small buds, adventitious buds are being formed up and they are forming roots, then they will fall off and they grow as a new plant. So, through the leaf, they are doing their vegetative reproduction. So, until now, we see about the three different types of natural vegetative probigules. One is a root, another one is stem, and third one is the leaves. So, what is the advantage and disadvantage of natural vegetative propagation method. First, let me take what are all the advantages of it. So, as they are doing through their vegetative uh, parts, they no need any external agencies to the, do the process of pollination. And I think you are aware about uh, sexual reproduction. In plants, if you are taking um, the sexual reproduction, if you are taking in case of a plant, as I stated, the flower is the uh, reproductive part. In case of a flower, if you are taking flower, um, the pollen grains should be travel from, it has to travel from the anther to the stigma. I just draw you one picture. So flower, they are having uh, the filaments which contain the anther. 
and anther have their pollen grains. So these are called as the pollen grains. So this pollen grains has to transfer from anther to stigma. Stigma will be the male part, that is a gynoecium. On that, the pollen will be deposited. So, this process is called as the pollination. You are calling it as pollination. So, pollination can be done either by abiotic factors or by the biotic factor. If it is an, abiot if it is an abiotic factor, either water or air will do it. But if you take in case of a biotic, insects, birds are going to do this process. So pollinators, they are called as pollinators. So a plant has to depend on these pollinators for doing the process called as the pollination. But if you are taking uh, this vegetative propagation method, you need not to uh, expect, that is the plant need not to uh, uh, expect or need not to develop the uh, nectar gland to present the nectar to the insects or they should not be colorful and they do need to develop some evolutionary changes like modifying their stigma and that are all are not needed because they do need any external agencies to do this pollination. So, they can do it just like uh, propagating through stem leaf or them. So, insects, uh, abiotic or biotic, nothing is needed for them. That is a good advantage actually. And uh, because they have to offer something for them and the chance of pollination will be very less in case if they are preferring such uh, uh, pollinators. But it's it a very easy method. So, just like that they can do it. So, food is usually present in the vegetative structure and that will lead to the rapid growth of the buds into a daughter plants. Uh, as I stated, the buds are not only doing the vegetative propagation, but also they are storing the food material. With that food material, the daughter plants are just growing just in a happier way. But if you take a seed that have a very limited amount of food material in them, they have very limited time within that they have to germinate and then uh, they have to go for photosynthesis to just develop them. But in case of this vegetative propagation method, you are having enough amount of it for the daughter cells to grow. So it's an advantage. And the third advantage is that new plants resembles the parent plant in every way. Just as just they are going to be just like a clones of a parent. Clones of a parent. Exactly what you are required that will be uh, projected by the nature through their offspring. So only one parent are involved. There is no struggle for the gamete formation. Lot of energy being spent because of the uh, gamete formation that can be saved, conserved by the plants. And um, they are just uh, can in, uh, spend that energy in some other process. So only one parent are involved. And there is a chance of giving up a uh, lots and lots of uh, other uh, conservative process using that energy. So these are all some of the advantages of the natural vegetative propagation. What is the disadvantage? What nature is setting as a disadvantage? So lack of dispersal mechanism may lead to overcrowding. If the plant is not the seed is if the seed is dispersing uh, by uh, animals, for example, if uh, so it will go and disperse them in a very uh, longer, wider area and the species will take a very longer area to survive. Enough amount of uh, sunlight, water, if it is being dispersed in a very larger area. But as it is doing by the natural vegetative propagation method, plants so uh, there will be overcrowding happens in case of a uh, vegetative, uh, uh, natural vegetative propagation method. So that is one uh, disadvantage obviously. 
and the new plants are less varied. So as they are clones, you cannot expect any variations in them. Abdi parent madri dadurko. If suppose the parent is having any genetical disorders, adi ke dadu genetical disorders in the chera the error in the che the chromosome na. That will be travelled to the offspring. That is one uh, a great disadvantage actually. And a new plant may be less adaptable to the environmental changes. So because variation is not happening, so you cannot expect them to be adapted to the environment. So the parent and mother or your habitat le na anglo, adi habitat le da and the offspring or ko. So it is one disadvantage. So you cannot expect these uh, plants to be. Cultivated everywhere because they are all just clones, so they will also follow the same habitat. I just given you a picture of a sniffers, a type of a grass that is being crowded, overcrowded in an area because of this natural vegetative propagation method. So, I think you get a good idea about natural vegetative propagation method. Nature is setting its own propagation using root, stem, and leaf. They are just expanding and rising up their own species. And now humans are always having a good curiosity in making things on their own. Namle the senji paakono bringer or curiosity humans ke pko meirko, right? So we just understand that natural vegetative propagation, and we studied how the nature is doing it, and we are taking it on our own. So because nature vande pme or vishita rumbas slow and steady adam pannu. Correct. So, but humans have no time for all this because we have to offer food for a very larger scale of population. So, agriculture panano, horticulture panano, no, we cannot expect for the nature to take such a very long time to do it. So, humans will always have running out of time. So, they are taking this natural uh, method on their own in their hands, and that is called as the artificial propagation. Here also we are using only stem, root, and leaf, but we are doing it on our own. Nature is not doing, but we are using as nature is doing, but in a larger scale as a human. That is the difference between the natural vegetative propagation and uh, artificial vegetative propagation. There are uh, two methods in this uh, type of artificial propagation. One is the conventional method. That man is being using this for a longer period of time. Number parangal tler the day pani tikkar. In any case, to be now one example I can state you. Murunga maro nam vitla vekkino na ena panu. Ah, oru murunga kalai vandu, var oru vitla endu vangi thandu veku. Correcta. So that is one called as a conventional method. Here that doesn't need any uh, technical knowledge and all. We should know only one thing. Is it a stem propagation? Root propagation or root uh, say leaf propagation. That's it. Adi podo on the knowledge podo. So we can uh, cut that part, put it up, and we have to provide a proper environment for them. Give them a good uh, amount of uh, nutrition, water supply, and they will grow. So this is called as the conventional method of uh, vegetative propagation that is done by humans artificially for a very longer period of time. But when you are taking a modern method, here you are using. Technologies like tissue culture, micro propagation, and we are doing it in laboratory condition. Highly technical knowledge is needed, and but here, what is the greater advantage is that you can do n number of uh, offspring in a very short duration of time with this technical knowledge. So large number can be produced in a shorter period of time. There is always human desire to do it. So we are doing it, and that technique and that method is called as the modern method. We are going to see both of it under the artificial propagation. So the first one is the conventional method, as I stated, very long duration of time. Humans are following them. So one, two, three things we are going to discuss here: cutting, grafting, layering. The first one is the cutting. So cutting either the root. Stem or leaf of the parent, and we are going to place it in a suitable medium to grow. That is a soil, and we have to provide them what are all the necessary things. So proper sunlight, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, the watering, irrigation, correct? No. 
then and the soil ella quantity of nutrients are can't pack no that's it then they will be started growing so there are three different uh, cuttings as i stated one is a root cutting stem cutting leaf cutting so stem cutting is widely we are using for all, mostly of all type of uh, plants so root cutting if you are taking uh, malice is an example for the root cut uh, apple apple da vand malice so apple oda plants eppadi propagate pandranga na only through the root so they will be cut a part of a root put it in a soil grow it let them form the plantlet then they will be transferring this root to the field nalathukku maathiruva then like this stem as i stated moringa moringa maro so stem cutting we just cut the stem and grow it up and bryophyllum the good example is a leaf or leaf irunda podu you can grow this bryophyllum in a very larger scale so these are all just example for cutting either root stem or leaf has been used for the process of artificial vegetative propagation and the third one is called as a grafting uh, here we are we want we want to make some uh, variation we want to uh, combine uh, two different uh, plants together and we just want to do some experiment by just uh, uh, mixing up uh, two different types of plants so what you do you go for the method called as a graft as i stated we are taking two plants one is going to act as a stalk another going to act as a cyzon so one is going to act as a stalk the plant which is having contact with the soil so in the plant to the root soil irko that is called as a stalk and in the plant to the root soil illa but plant to the stem root la irukadodukku mele nam vechumna that is called as a cycon so cycon has no attachment with the soil stalk has attachment with the soil so this is a good picture which shows you here it is the stalk which is having the root at the soil and you are placing a stem over it and that is going to act as a cyzon the best example for this grafting method is mango so mango la vandu ottu maanga appdin solvanga and the word neenga kelli pattirpinga nanikira so we have nearly hundreds varieties of mango so ella mango mo it's just a combination of two different varieties so sweetness kaga uh, juice kaga and very romba thinana layer skin irukra maadri nariya fleshy region irukra maari naar kammiya irukra maari and the mari we are just uh, doing it between two different uh, mango varieties uh, by the technique called as a grafting and we have uh, five different type of grafting method romba common a irukra vishayam stalk size on adha endha change illa eppadi and stalk and size ana namm onna sekro nradha vechuda we are just classifying it but if you are taking first method called as a bud grafting in the bud grafting method you are just going to put a uh, t shaped insertion or chinna cut madri t shape la or cut ready panna poringa and the cut la what you are going to do you are going to put the size on that is bud and the bud or leaf or kalam illa or kutti stem ma irukala you are just going to put it the bud is just a growing part avladha and the stem oda growing part a irukala leaf oda growing part a irukala so that bud will be attached on the t section la insert panittu then you have to tie it up using the plast or mari polythene cover madri irukku which has been uh, uh, mainly used only for the purpose of grafting kagave in the cover or mari use pannuvanga so adha vechi nam enna panna porom we are going to tie it up and after that a new plant will arise from this region so idu vandu neenga veetla senji paakla i just uh, tried one thing na onnu try panna in the wedge grafting na veetla try panna okay va so the second one is called as approach grafting idu konjam Uh, different are ko use kave why because you are having a two different plants one on the potted plant in one on the a normal uh, uh, plant which is having root on the ground itself and the stem may on the stem you we just uh, making some uh, uh, scratching right on the stem on the scratch panite we are just uh, joining it together and tying it up a new branch was developed which is having both the character i was really wondered uh, when i see this in a horticulture um, platform so or horticulture unit ku poi idu nanga live ah path approach grafting and third one is called as the 
tongue graft. Here you are making an incision like a tongue. Nak madri oru incision ready panite. We are just adding two different plants together. And the fourth one is a crown grafting. Uh, this is also one uh, important type of grafting done in uh, trees especially. So trees, uh, we are just cutting up the trunk and we will be placing two to three different branches of other type of uh, tree and we are making it like a crone. So crone will come in the attachment. So that is called as a crone grafting. And wedge, uh, as I said, wedge madri V shaped we are cutting up and we are inserting a new plant on it and they will be growing up. So it's a combination of two different plants together. So that is called as a wedge grafting or grafting. Five different varieties on it. And the third one is called as a layering. Here stem of the parent plant is allowed to develop root while still intact. Unnuvi panapurdula. What happened? The stem will have a contact with the soil and they start rooting there. Simple. This is the rose and jasmine plant. So the root is going to just form the region where the branch is going to have a contact with the soil. Okay, instead of cutting and doing, we are just uh, just placing it on the soil. After the branch is going to form a uh, root, then we are going to cut the part. So, in the earth, we will be root form. We will be cutting this plant alone and we will be keeping it separate. So, you have two different types of uh, uh, layering here. One is called as the air layering. Um, Papaya la usually in the layering panwang and the take marang adala panwang the layering. So the lena panro abdina. Here you can see that uh, you are cutting a part of a stem here. So in that le on the stem on the cut panito. Cut panito you are just adding a branch of another stem and uh, in the uh, sorry in that le no uh, an outer layer matto cut panir thitte. That is very layer kara the parent kai muscles matto cut panir thitte. Bark, you will be adding some moist soil. You cover it just cut it in So what happened? Roots will develop from this region. The cover the roots are all formed up. Right? So after the stem cut it, they will be placed on the soil. So uh, such a very easy method of uh, propagation. So uh, uh, just the outer layer is being peeled off. They will be covered with a moist soil and covered up and until they form the root. After the roots have been formed, we just cut the stem along with the root. We will be placing on our soil. That's it. Fine. Easy method, right? And the second one is called as a mound rearing. As I said, jasmine. Mm, we are just bending up the branches and putting it in soil. And we are placing up some weight over there. Let them form this uh, root and then we will be cutting and placing it in a uh, different region. So, this is about the conventional method. So, what is the advantage of the conventional method? Genetically uniform offsprings are being raised up by this method of conventional method. Genetically uniform. So, you here you cannot expect any uh, difference in the plant. So, if you are growing up a certain variety of plant in a very larger scale, so, in the agriculture field, one variety of plant you design, then this is a method. If we go to the garden or nurseries, they are using this genetically uh, uh, conventional method to get a genetically uniform breeds. Because in India, we have to breed in the nurseries. We have to cutting, grafting, layering, different varieties they are just making up. And that should be uh, followed up in all the plants of what they are selling. So, this genetically uniform can be get through the conventional method. And very quick. So, need not to wait for the plants to do it on their own for a very longer duration of time will be required for it. So, we it is very quick a method to take up this uh, as a uh, vegetative propagation. And as you know that the plant is not going to uh, produce any seeds. 
ஒருவேளை <laughs> especially if you are taking for potato solanum tuberosum this method is a very a very desirable method um, and this is also gives you disease resistant plants and high yield so because na sonna la genetically uniform abdin solumbodu so all varieties will be disease resistant so uh, a money which is being spent for the pesticides can be saved uh, if you are using this type of vegetative uh, propagation method that is especially the conventional method short duration of time so what is the disadvantage of using this so virus infected plant oru vela suppose nam eduthukra the mother plant if it is being virus infected plant then what happen it will be followed to all the plants which you are propagating from that mother plant so that is one disadvantage and uh, this vegetative structure when you are propagating in a bulky form கொஞ்சம் டிஃபிகல்ட்டாக இருக்கும் ஹேண்டில் பண்ணுறதுக்கும் ஸ்டோர் பண்ணுறது பிகாஸ் ஹியூமன் மேனுவல் பவர் இஸ் ஹைலி நீடட் நீங்கள் போயிட்டு ஒவ்வொரு பிளான்ட்டையும் கட் பண்ணி ரூட் பர வச்சு அப்புறம் அதை எடுத்து சாயில் வச்சு ஸோ இட்ஸ் ரெக்யர் சச் அ ஸ்டோரேஜ் ஸ்பேஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இட் ரெக்யர்ஸ் ஹேண்டிலிங் ஆஃப் கிரேடர் ஹியூமன் பவர் இஸ் ரெக்யர்ட் தட் இஸ் த ஒன்லி ஸ்மால் டிஸ்அட்வான்டேஜ் ஆன் தி கன்வென்ஷனல் மெத்தட் ஸோ ஹியூமன்ஸ் ஆர் டூயிங் இட் so what we are doing we just uh, want to make it in a very bigger level we just want to uh, need the help of a uh, modern methods so it is a professor named fc stewart 1932 of cornell university he is the first scientist who just implemented modern uh, technologies in vegetative propagation method in just to uh, avoid this uh, um, short duration and all these disadvantages are being controlled up and he had given varieties of uh, plants just in a laboratory or laboratory or chinna space ku la or highly edirpakada alu combination of plants first first kudutha var vand professor f c stewart uh, cornell university la he is the one who worked on the mature ploem parenchyma cells carrot la rendu edutha parenchyma cells or suitable medium la valathu வெறும் ஒரு டிஷ்யூஸ்ல இருந்து கேரட் பிளான்ஸை வந்து டெவலப் பண்ணிட்டோம் ஸோ தட் இஸ் அ மாடர்ன் மெத்தட் விச் இஸ் பீங் யூஸ்ட் ஹவ் இட் இஸ் பாசிபிள் சிம்பிளி பை த வேர்ட் கால்டு இஸ் டோட்டியோ பொட்டான்சி த வேர்ட் டோட்டியோ பொட்டான்சி ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு த எபிலிட்டி த ஜெனட்டிக் எபிலிட்டி ஆஃப் த பிளான்ஸ் அந்த பிளான்ஸில் நீங்கள் எங்கே இருந்து வேணால் எடுக்கலாம் யூ கேன் டேக் இட் ஃப்ரம் த செம் லீவ் ஒரு சின்ன செல்ஸ் இருந்தால் போதும் அ மாஸ் ஆஃப் செல் இஃப் யூ ஆர் புட்டிங் தேம் இன் ஆர்டிஃபிஷியல் மீடியம் ஒரு லெபாரட்டரியில் பெட்ரி டிஷ்ஷில் ஒரு மீடியத்தில் யூ கேன் ஜஸ்ட் போட்டிட அப் அண்ட் தே வில் ஃபார்ம் அ மாஸ் ஆஃப் டிஷ்யூ அண்ட் அ ஸ்மால் பிளான்ட்லெட் வில் அரைஸ் அண்ட் அ பிளான்ட்லெட் அப்படியே எடுத்து நேரம் ஃபீடில் வச்சு ஸோ லேப் இஸ் கோயிங் டு கிவ் யூ டென் பை டென் ரூம் ஆஃப் லேப் இஸ் கோயிங் டு ப்ராபகேடிட் அப் ஹைலி பெரிய டெக்னாலஜிஸ்னு இல்லை சிம்பிள் டெக்னாலஜி டிஷ்யூ கல்ச்சர் யூஸ் பண்ணி யூ கேன் ஏபிள் டு டூ இட் மெனி ஒண்டர்ஸ் கேன் பி டன் யூஸிங் திஸ் Uh, propagation methods so it is called as a micro propagation method a uh, whole plant is developed from a very single cells or tissue or chinna bit of plant irundha podu ungalala or full plant e valathra mudi so that is called as a micro propagation technique and ninga nenikira mari ella hybriding um idla panida mudi apple la eduth tomato oda mix panna mudiyum tomato va eduth potato oda mix panna mudiyum so all these wonders of hybridization can be done in the micro propagation tech very rapid technique where only lab is required and lab la pandradala romba controlled namakitta irukku so you cannot uh, show any failures ellame success aagum so that is a control will be with you people and idu vandu seasonal kada continuous a varsham fulla ungalala idu propagate panna mudiyum and this is free propagation uruvaaga mudiyum conventional method or a period is advantages disease uh, will be formed from the parent to the offspring but micro propagation pannum bodu sterile environment la pannum bodu you don't find such a disease uh, in the 
probable so disease free probables can be produced so in an expense your plant n edukumbodu or lot la ninga pannumbodu periya expense idukku selavaga poradhu kadaiyadhu so you can do it in a laboratory so that is the advantages of uh, modern method short duration genetically identical offsprings can be produced no need wait for any seasons and endangered aliye pore enatha kuda nammala enna panna mudiyum we can grow it up and we can save the species and the species are aliye ma paathukum mudiyum and you can produce a viable uh, seeds and meristem here you can produce a disease free plants and if you want you can do any number of genetical modifications so that is a high advantages of modern method so what is the disadvantage the simple disadvantage is that you require highly skilled persons to work here so labor uh, that is a one and you have to maintain the sterility in the laboratory so or chinna bacteria virus edume varal mari sterile la vechukonga lab la so that is one for that you have to spend some money and uh, as you are producing genetically identical you should be very aware about what is the species you are choosing for adu neenga romba theliva irukkum and then callus is actually a group of a mass of cell that is being formed on a petri dish is called as a callus so idhula endha undesirable changes um nadakkada mari perfect ah neenga maintain pananum illaina commercial ku varumbodhu they show some errors avladha chinna chinna disadvantages da but technical persons are handle pannumbodhu it will be the well and good method to do the propagation so nature longer duration of time eduthu pandra vichitha romba short duration of time la or lab ku la we can do it if you are skilled enough so that's all about the asexual reproduction in plants so i just wind up with this so we talked about the vegetative propagation method in this natural artificial and natural root stem and leaf uh, what are all the examples adala paathu natural oda advantage disadvantage discuss pannu then artificial method la we talked about the conventional method and modern method adoda advantage and disadvantage discuss pannu so then section 2 la uh, we will be discussing on the uh, sexual reproduction and plants pathi uh, detail la namak paathu thank you உங்களுக்கு ஏதாவது டவுட்ஸ் இருந்துச்சு இல்ல மேம் இந்த மாதிரி நடத்த நல்லா இருக்கும் அந்த மாதிரி எந்த கமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆனாலும் ஐ ஹைலி வெல்கம் அண்ட் பிளீஸ் புட் இன் கமெண்ட் ஃபார் ஃபார் இம்ப்ரூவிங் மை செஷன் அலாட் அண்ட் ஐ வில் கிவ் யூ வாட் எவர் யூ வாண்ட் இன் அ வெரி பெஸ்ட் வே உங்க எல்லாருக்கும் எல்லா விஷயமும் போகணும் தட் இஸ் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் மை டீச்சிங் அண்ட் ஐ திங்க் யூ காட் இட் சி யூ இன் த நெக்ஸ்ட் செக்ஷன் தேங்க்யூ